Hey guys, today we're going to talk about reversible reactions and something called equilibrium. Um, so the learning objective today is the student will be able to explain the concept of equilibrium in terms of a reversible reaction. So, so far we've talked about reactions and you did um, a FET the other day on the rates of reactions and the types of things that tend to speed up chemical reactions. So the reactions we've looked at so far have had an arrow pointing to the right. You had something like A plus BC produces AC plus B, which kind of makes sense. Those reactions are called non-reversible reactions, meaning the reaction only moves in one direction from reactants to products. The products don't break down and start to form reactants um, once they've been produced. And you also watched a video on that um, regarding uh, reversible reactions and it talked a little bit about how non-reversible reactions only move in one direction. However, not all reactions behave this way. There are many reactions that are much more dynamic. We call those types of reactions reversible. Reversible reactions occur when the reaction can move both directions from left to right and back from right to left. So the reactants react to form products initially, but the products can also react to reform the reactants. This is identifiable by a double arrow pointing in both directions. This double arrow points left and right, showing the reaction going in both directions. So when you see something like this, what that means is that not only can A combine with BC to produce AC plus B, but AC plus B then also react to produce A and BC. So you get reactants producing products, and then the products in, that, in, in essence uh, reacting to produce more reactants. So um, if we added the reactants A and BC into the reaction, the products AC and B would be produced. But since it's reversible, AC and B would react to reform A and BC, and that continues on and on. However, rea uh, reversible reactions do stop. Not really stop, but what we call that is equilibrium. So the point at which a reversible reaction, quote unquote, stops is called equilibrium. And we represent equilibrium by the letter K. Now, I don't know if there's any significance to that letter K, but when you see the letter K, you should think of chemical equilibrium. A reaction reaches chemical equilibrium when no further changes take place in the concentration of the reactants and the products. So notice here, let's just kind of think about a chemical reaction. When you add two chemicals together, you have a certain amount of one of the chemicals and a certain amount of the other uh, of, of the chemicals. And so the amounts of those reactants are going to start to decrease as what? As they react and start to be used up in the reaction. So that makes sense that the reactants start to decrease and the products start to increase as the reaction goes, because that's exactly what's happening. Those things are reacting with each other, meaning there's less and less of the reactants and more of the product, at which point you get a steady um, portion in the, the uh, reaction that we call equilibrium. So there's no further change taking place in the concentration of the reactants and the products. At equilibrium, the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. The forward and reverse reactions continue at the same rate. That doesn't mean the same amount of products and reactants are being made. It just means that the, the reaction reactants are being turned into products as, at the same rate at which the products are being turned into reactants. The equilibrium for every reaction is different, and most do not end with a 50-50 split of products and reactants. So it doesn't mean that you just make exactly as much product as you have reacted. It just depends on the chemical reaction. So the equilibrium constant, or K, is the numerical value obtained when the concentrations of the reactants and products are each raised to a power equal to their respective coefficient from a balanced equation. Now, that sounds confusing, but I'll, I'll explain that here in the next uh, bullet point. So let's take this general reaction here. We have A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D. So what the, the A, the, small, the lowercase italicized A, B, and C represent are the coefficients in a balanced equation. So you go through and you balance your chemical equation. That's what these lowercase italicized letter represent or any potential numbers that you have there for the coefficient to balance the equation. The uppercase A, B, C, and D, those are the, the chemicals that you have in the chemical reaction. 
So here's our uh, reactants A and B, producing our products C and D. So the equilibrium constant expression, that K, that's going back up to here, this is explaining all this numerical value obtained, blah, 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 is gonna be the concentration, and I will we'll talk about this on the next slide, but these brackets represent the concentration of each of the uh, reactants and products raised to a power of their coefficient. So notice here, I've got my capital C, the concentration of that element, raised to a power of its coefficient, times the reactant, or excuse me, the product D, raised to the power of its coefficient. Now that might be one, if, there's, if it's just a coefficient of one, divided by the re concentration of the reactants. So it's products over reactants. So again, I've got my element or compound A, whatever it might be, raised to the power of its coefficient, times the concentration of B, element or compound, whatever it is in our chemical uh, reaction, raised to the power of its coefficient. So this uh, equation here is explaining what's going on in this bullet point. So in that equilibrium expression, this is just from the last slide here, the square brackets indicate the moles per liter concentration of each substance. So typically what you'll be asked to do is to calculate the K value for a chemical reaction. And then you're gonna be given all of the um, concentrations of each substance. So it's really just plugging in numbers and then doing some math. So you look at your balanced chemical equation, you plug in all your concentrations for each of the products, each of the reactants, however many there are, raise them to the power of their coefficients, and then multiply on the bottom, multiply on the top, and then divide obviously the products, the concentration of the products by the concentration of the reactants. And then the superscripts, like we said before, are uh, the coefficients from that general equation. So this K value means something to us in chemistry. When you, when you have a large equilibrium constant or a large K value, it means that the forward reaction produced a large amount of products when the equilibrium is reached. So you're gonna have more products being produced than you have reactants. And so that's when K is greater than one. So the reverse of that then means that when a reaction has a small equilibrium constant, the equilibrium mixture contains a large amount of reactants when equilibrium is reached. That means their K value is less than one. So when you do the math on here and you see that your K value is greater than one, then you know that they're, it, it's, it's favoring the product side of the reaction is what we say. Or if your K value is less than one, then it's favoring the reactant side of the chemical reaction. So here we've got just some K values, small, intermediate, and large. So when you have small K values, it's most of the reactants. You can see these are this visual piece here. All these purple little circles are the reactants. This one orange diamond represents a product. When you have an intermediate value, somewhere between 10 to the negative third or 10 to the third, then it's, it's relatively equal. You have significant amounts, significant amounts of reactants and products. And then finally, when you have a large K value, then you have mostly products. So I hope that helps kind of explain this as you go through your notes, pause the video where you need a little bit uh, extra help and maybe go back and, and re-listen to the video as you fill out your note sheet. As always, any questions, shoot me an email or remind, okay? Have a great day.